All right guys, welcome back to my channel. If you were here yesterday, you know that today is part two. If you haven't watched part one first, go ahead and go to yesterday's video. I will also link it down below and you should subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that I am putting out. So today is part two, things are getting a little weird. I have not read forward at all. I'm reading this with you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Enough chit chat. I'm hoping this video isn't as long as yesterday's, but I really want it to get good. So December 13th. Buddy and Mr. Jingles had ornaments and Sharpies and green paint out. The kids knew what that meant. Every year I write what the kids want for Christmas on an ornament that we hang on the Christmas tree. We also put the kids' hands in paint and press their hands into our Christmas tree skirt so we can see how their handprints grow each year. Nick was awake because it was one of his favorite traditions. We listened to Christmas music and watched my favorite Christmas movie, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I even wore my shirt that said, Merry Christmas, shitter's full for the festive occasion. The kids went to bed and Nick and I stayed up talking. Sorry you had to deal with Harry dying. I hate when I have to work third shift and can't help out as much. We barely see each other. Sometimes it's, a, it's weeks before we really have a chance to talk, he said. I know you would help if you could. It's helpful that you are sacrificing and work third shift so we can have a nice Christmas. It's not forever, even though it feels like it is. You just need to get better at replying to my text messages. Nick was notoriously awful at replying to my text, and when he did, it was often with a lowercase letter K. He laughed, all right, but I'm going to write novels like you do. I smiled, well really, thanks again for the elf apology. He looked at me weird. What elf apology? Very funny, you know the elf apology with the Twizzler pretzel rose and the chocolate chips saying, I'm sorry, Buddy was dressed like me with a fur coat, I explained. He looked at me like I had two heads and laughed uncomfortably. Um, I didn't do that. Are you smoking the devil's lettuce? He joked. Whatever, I said and rolled my eyes. I wasn't going to play into his pranks. We finished the movie and went to bed. December 16th. I woke up to another one of Nick's elf creations. On the 14th, I had Buddy in a stack of three rolls of toilet paper that I made look like a snowman with Mr. Jingles placing an orange construction paper carrot nose on. On the 15th, I had Buddy and Mr. Jingles in a bubble bath that consisted of them sitting in the sink filled with giant marshmallows as the bubbles. Last night, I put Buddy and Mr. Jingles on the coffee table. I had them fishing for goldfish, but this morning I woke up to them doing something else. Buddy was in his fur coat and wig again. He was sleeping in a bed made of tissue box and spooning with Mr. Jingles. A sign above them said, shh. I took this th to mean that Nick wanted some sexy time while the kids were at school. We hadn't really seen each other or spoken since a few nights ago due to his third shift schedule. Nick was in his usual all enveloping blanket burrito when I came into the bedroom. I got under my covers. We have separate blankets because we both steal the covers otherwise. I spooned up to him in, in the exact way he had positioned Buddy and Mr. Jingles. Shh, he said, still hiding under the covers from the fan wind and faint glow of the bathroom light. I slid my hand under the covers, reached over his hip and down his buddy, down his belly. He gasped while I found what I had been searching for and he moaned when I started rhythmically moving my hand. It wasn't a minute before he came. He pulled the blanket even tighter around himself in embarrassment for coming so quickly. I smiled. It's okay, honey. It's a comp compliment, really, that I know your body so well. It's been so long since we've had sex because of our schedules. I'm sure you were just pent up and overly excited. He didn't say anything. I'll let you get your sleep. I said as he slipped back out of the covers and closed the bedroom door behind me. December 17th. I had Buddy taped to the wall and Mr. Jingles taped to the train tracks that were went around our Christmas tree. A bunch of those tiny little green army men had them surrounded today. Nick had been working very hard and just groaning responses to me when I ducked my head into the room to see if he wants to do anything on his day off. Ugh, he owns at me, moans at me. I've decided to let him sleep. It's not worth him not getting the appropriate sleep. I don't want him crashing as he drives to work tonight because he was up for 24 hours. The kids and I visit Santa at the mall. They're both brave this year. Last year, Chris was wailing and kicking to get away from Santa. This year, he smiles and timidly says, hi, from behind me. Juniper has always had a big personality and with a thousand megawatt smile, she runs up to Santa. Hi Santa, my name is Juniper. I've been very nice this year and good to my brother unless he isn't good to me. I would like a Hot Wheels garage and a million Hot Wheels cars. 
I catch up with her, with Chris in tow. Have we forgotten our magic words? And do you think you're going to be a bit greedy with a million Hot Wheel cars? She looks down at her feet and says, Sorry, Santa. Please, can I have a Hot Wheels garage and some Hot Wheels cars to go with it? That's much better, I say approvingly. Ho, 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 Santa laughs. Oh, I know you have been very good this year. And what would your brother like? Juniper goes over to Chris and puts her arms around his shoulders, guiding him forward. She puts her face down by his face like an adult would to a small child and uses her adult soothing voice. What would you like to ask Santa for, Chris? You can tell me. I can tell him if you're too scared. Chris nods and whispers in Juniper's ear. He says he wants Pokemon and Marshall. He means from Paw Patrol. You know the dog with the spots and the red hat? She explained, this waving her hand around as she talks like I do. Even though she's six, she seems much older at this moment. It's times like these that she makes my heart melt. Ho, ho, I think I can do that, Santa booms and Chris smiles. The, the kids are non-stop chattering in the minivan on the drive home about how nice they're going to be and make sure they get the toys they just ordered from Santa. December 20th. It's Juniper's birthday today. I always ask her what kind of cake she wants so that Buddy can make the cake for her overnight. I have her draw it on the day before so she, he knows how exactly to draw the picture on the cake. This year, she wanted herself wearing a blue dress and bouncing a ball, but he came through with the help of Mr. Jingles. They both looked like they had worked very hard with frosting all over their faces. The kid gasped in awe at the cake as then giggled at the elves and their frosting covered heads. The cake was a big hit, though I couldn't get Nick up for Juniper's birthday. He groaned at me from his blanket burrito when I went to wake him up for the lighting of the birthday candles. He always uses a torch he has in the garage for a big, big dramatic flourish when lighting the candles. Mostly, I'm sure, because he likes to hear me stressed out and disapproving as I say, is that really necessary? He would only groan at me from his blanket burrito. Seriously, Nick, it's your daughter's birthday. You can get up for five minutes and sing happy birthday to her. He groaned again, again and mumbled, sick, came out from the blanket lump before me. He must be really sick because I know he wouldn't want to miss something like this. I'm sorry, honey, I didn't know you were feeling sick. Is there anything I can get you? He grunted and no. I left the room and I was closing the door. I let him know just to yell if he needed anything. After the kids were tucked into bed, I crawled into my own bed. Nick was still in his blanket burrito when snoring. Good, I thought. He needs his rest to feel better. I drifted off to sleep. I woke up briefly in the night when I felt him throw his arm over me to spoon. Feeling better, I see? Mm-hmm. He replied, his breath on my back neck. I smiled as he pulled me into him, and we both fell back into a deep sleep. I woke up alone in bed. Nick must have gotten up early and headed out to get donuts. He loves don't doing that for the kids, and the kids love when he does it. The kids have actually asked me why I'm not fun like Dad is, because I don't go out and get donuts. Never mind all the Christmas magic I make happen all month long. Crap, I said out loud. What, Juniper asked, and Chris came running over too. What, Mommy, he asked, concerned. Nothing, never mind. Go watch TV, you guys. I said quickly, I had just realized I forgot to clean up and move Buddy and Mr. Jingles from the cake making the day before. I snuck into the kitchen after I was assured that they were absorbed in Christmas cartoons to try and move the elves, but they were gone. Woo! Nick must have realized I forgot and moved them himself. God bless that man. I turned around and on the kitchen table was a beautiful bouquet of roses with Mr. Jingle sitting in the center next to Buddy, who was again in the fur coat and a wig portraying me. He was gasping again with his hands in his face as Mr. Jingles held an open jewelry box with a beautiful silver snowflake necklace inside. I text Nick right away. Oh my God, thank you so much for the beautiful necklace. You didn't have to do that. I thought we said no presents, only for the kids. Nick replied moments later, I just love you so much. You are more beautiful every day. I love the way you smell. I smiled, remembering his breath on my neck the night before. You're so silly. I love you too. Where are you? When are you coming back? I said, I had to go help a buddy move some stuff into his new house. I'm sorry. I'll have to go straight to work and then back to, to bed. I hate third shift. I rolled my eyes. I know it's not his fault, but third shift is so isolating for both of us. Okay, I hope you're feeling better. You're such a good friend. See you when I see you, I guess. December 24th. I hadn't seen Nick in days besides the burrito blob form he took while sleeping. 
In the meantime, I had moved Buddy and Mr. Jingles around every night. I did the classic one where it looks like they pooped out a big Hershey's kiss on the 22nd, and on the turn 23rd, I had Buddy and Mr. Jingles draw mustaches and beards on all the family pictures. Today, Buddy and Mr. Jingles had all the ingredients to make cookies for Santa when he brings all the presents tonight. The kids and I had made the cookies and decorated them very carefully so that Santa would only have the best cookies to choose from since he works so hard. We put them on the nightstand near the Christmas tree with some milk and some carrots for the reindeer and I tucked the kids in bed. I crawled into my own bed after the light was turned off. Are you awake? I asked Nick. Mm-hmm, he said sleepily. Are you going to eat the cookies and carrots and milk and drink the milk or do I need to? As this, he rolled out of bed and walked across the room. His silhouette seemed slightly bigger than I remember him being. Funny how darkness and exhaustion from taking care of the kids all day can mess with your eyes. He left the room and closed the door behind him, and in a moment, I was sleeping with visions of sugar plums dancing in my head. December 25th. I awoke at 2 a.m. again when Nick draped his arm across my body. I smiled. I just loved the feeling of his strong arms around me, but something was different. Did you just take a shower? I grunted. Did you just take a shower? He grunted a no at me. Then why does your arm feel wet? I reached across the side of the bed and turned the bedside lamp on. The light was blinding and it was hard to get my eyes to focus. I looked down at my chest and saw a wet, dark spot. I touched it, confused, and when I pulled my hand away, my fingers were red. Red. The exact same color of cr the red that Chris and Juniper's noses were earlier in the month when Nick painted them. Why do you have paint on your hand? I stopped mid-sentence as I turned to face the man in bed next to me. The man was not Nick. I froze in horror, too afraid to scream, and even if I could, not wanting to wake the children. The man was in full-blown replica elf on the shelf costume. He had one bright green eye and the other eye was recently removed, leaving a gaping red hole as blood ran down the left side of his face. Noel, it's me, Mr. Jingles. I wanted to vomit. I wanted to faint, but thoughts of my children kept me from doing either. I saw how you didn't care that I was a misfit. You loved me anyway. You smiled at my rose candy and you loved the silver snowflake necklace I got you. You told me you loved me from the first time right after I got the necklace for you. The nights we've slept next to each other, the way you touched me that night, how wonderful you smell. It's been magical. I'm sorry I needed to use Harry to make your fur coat. I didn't have any money yet. But you laughed so much when I used his blood to paint the children's noses that I knew you loved the coat, and you did. He giggled with joy. My head was spinning as I realized Nick was not the one moving Buddy and Mr. Jingles. This sick, deranged individual had been accessing my house and moving them around. He had been sleeping in the burrito blanket. For how long? Where had Nick been all this time? Aren't you happy to finally meet me and talk to me? It's a Christmas miracle. You love Christmas. I stared without talking, my brain barely holding on to sanity and trying to figure out how to get my kids to safety. Talk to me, he screamed. I screamed then, but quietly clasping my hands to my mouth, hoping I hadn't woken the children. You hate me because I'm a misfit. Mommy didn't like me either. I stuttered. I, I, I could never hate you, Mr. Jingles. I'm just... Surprised is all. I thought you had to go back to the North Pole today, and Nick would be very surprised to see you here in my bed. He snorted in dis disgust. Nick, oh, he was surprised, all right. He didn't. No, couldn't love you like I do. He wasn't worthy of you and your pure love of Christmas. Only I could match that love. It was at this moment that the scream started. Two loud screams from my tiny children. They were mixed with heavy sobs. I shoved Mr. Jingles away from me and ran towards the screaming that was coming from our dining room, the room with the fireplace that I had so carefully decorated and hung our stockings with care. As I rounded the corner, I heard Christmas rapping by the waitresses playing. And then I saw the kids running at me. They buried their faces into my stomach and began clawing at me desperately, trying to get me to pick them up. Mommy, mommy, what is that? What is that? They screamed in unison as I picked them up. They hadn't noticed. Thank God they hadn't yet realized. 
It was Nick, our Nick, my Nick. His skull had been hollowed out like a pumpkin, his eyes popping out and his tongue cut from his head. His mouth was gaping open like a fish. His head was the star of the Macrobe Christmas tree. The light shone out brightly from his eye sockets and mouth. Instead of a garland, his intestines were wrapped around the tree. Instead of ornaments, they were hanging fingers, toes, and ears in his nose. Later, the news reports would say they found one foot in Juniper's stocking, one foot in Chris's, Nick's left hand with his wedding band still on his ring finger in his stocking, and a present in my stocking. I had screamed minutes after witnessing the tree, all of the horrific details using those minutes to etch themselves forever in my brain. As I turned to run to the front door, I thought I saw Mr. Jingles wink at me with his one good eye as he ran out the back door. I ran from my house to the neighbors screaming the whole time. I had my carried my babies away from that horror, but they had still screamed with me. How will I ever get that image out of my children's head? Ma'am, I came out of my stupor. You wanted to know what was in the present. Are you sure you want to know? My neighbor asked. He had gone over by the cops before the cops arrived since he couldn't get out of me what was happening. I nodded. It was earrings. Earrings? I said in a daze. The neighbor nodded. Why were you so hesitant to tell me earlier then? I asked. They weren't just any earrings. They were dangly earrings. I stared blankly, waiting for him to proceed. They had a note. Well, what did the note say? I asked in monotone. I only have eyes for you. All right, guys. That took a... Oh, turn. <laughs> um, holy cow, that was not how I expected it to end at all. I will say that that was kind of a slow, like, I knew something was wrong with the elf, but I didn't know, like, I was waiting for the big event. It took a while, but holy cow, that's so gross, so creepy. I'm really sad that Harry's, was it Harry? No, who's the husband? What's the name of the husband again? Nick. I'm sad that Harry's dead. I'm sad that Nick's dead. Mr. Jingles is still out there wreaking havoc. Um, that's terrifying. Thank you guys for sticking around for this long. Um, again, this one was kind of long as well, but I don't think it was as long as the first one. But if you like these kinds of videos, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Next week, we will have another video coming out for you guys for the Wicked Wednesday uh, festive thing. It is another Reddit story. Um, I think it's going to be another Reddit story. I'm not 100% sure just yet. But yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Stay festive, stay spooky, and stay safe.